to Sunday Money. Well, it seems like we're growing in popularity. As It's like Game of Thrones. Remember when Game of Thrones was getting down to the last season and everybody started getting excited about it? Yeah. It's too late, kids. And they wrecked the ending, and then everyone's like, oh, the show wasn't as great as I thought. It's kind of like this. Well, didn't, Everyone's didn't loving give, us right now as we get down to the last eight episodes. They're like, how is it going to end? Where's Corey going to be? What's going to happen to Lauren and Poppy? You know, everyone wants to know how this is going to end. Guys, all you got to do is just keep tuning in because the last episode is going to be it's going to be talked about for years. Yeah. You're going to see some stuff you you're going to We're going to we're going to dig you. up all the corpses on the last show. I really and, uh, hope we do. And just ride off into the sunset. Some bridges are for burning and some are for crossing. We're going to burn them all, Corey, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, well, you, you might. Um, and then I'll have to figure out how to like duct tape them and nail them back together so I can possibly <laughs> cross them one day again because it never fails. No matter what bridge you burn in this industry, you always have to walk across it at some point in time and another thing. So, yeah. And you know, I was going to call you. I almost called both of you. <laughs> That's a great segue. You know what? Because that has been such. A busy week in the silly season, and probably some of the biggest news in probably the last half decade in the sport. Mm -hmm. Ross Chastain <laughs> is, going is going to the, to 42, the 42, guys. I mean, that is tremendous oh, news, humongous story. Um, beyond that, I don't think there's been anything exciting this week uh, that's been no, announced. Super boring. There was some guy that used to play basketball. Uh, that, that started a team, I guess, and then Bubba's going to drive for him. Yeah, never heard of him. Never really heard of the guy. Uh, have you heard the guy? My, uh, I think it was Mike. What's his name? Mike. 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 Uh, he's got a the couple of movies made about it, like Mike Space, Space Jam. Might have seen him in the movie Space Jam. Or, <laughs> you know, might have seen him win six NBA titles. Um, you know, he might, he might, may or may not have his own shoe line um, with his last name. Um, all kidding aside, Michael Jordan is a NASCAR team owner with Dennis Hamlin and Bo Wallace is the driver. None other than right. the only choice for that team was Bubba Wallace. Daryl. But we talked about this. Lauren, didn't we say this was going to happen when we brought up Michael Jordan like a month ago? Well, no, I'll be, I can't remember. I'll be honest with you. I was a little bit of a, a pessimist towards it. I, I didn't see it happening, but, but, I retract. I was wrong. Um, I guess that there was enough. Um, there was enough. I guess letters of intent or contracts signed with with sponsors on Bubba's end to really be incentivized to make a deal happen. Because I think without a uh, without those partners that Bubba's uh, rounded up over the last couple months, I don't think it happens. I mean, you don't you don't start a race team to try to find a driver and then right. try to find sponsorship. If you have the driver with funding, it makes perfect sense to pull the trigger on a team, especially with a void coming from LFR. Now Toyota needs to fill another hole, and it makes sense. And it's, I mean, I think, I think it's, I think it's badass. I mean, it, it's, it's cool. Why? So we uh, have, they have five months to completely start. I mean, I guess an entire new racing. I guess yeah. they're taking a lot of stuff from Jermaine Racing, maybe. I would imagine all their, you know, pit road equipment, pit boxes, and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Obviously, the cars are built Chevys. Right. They are built to accommodate ECR engines, so they're essentially worthless. But mm -hmm. it'll be it'll be a Gibbs alliance, no different than LFR. LFR. I mean, I think that the vision, the vision is it. They're wanting to make it more like a furniture row, mm -hmm. but it's going to lean more like a LFR, I believe. I think, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of the same personnel from LFR pushed over to whatever they call this team. Um, but to answer Daryl's question, yeah, why? Is, right. Why is it? Why is it big news? Because probably the most recognizable person in the world, uh, one of four or five. I mean, Michael Jordan is probably one of the most famous guys. Daryl would say Taylor Swift, but well, she's certainly in that four or five, right? Sure. I mean, Miley Cyrus. But you put Michael Jordan's face and you ask any stranger. Right. The majority of people will know who that guy is, right? And and the but fact that why he's... Why does that matter? Because it's just bringing new fans, new attention to the sport that, that we wouldn't have had elsewise, otherwise. 
you think because Michael Jordan was great at basketball that all of a sudden all the Michael Jordan fans are going to come and watch you race on a Sunday? I think Gabrielle Union was tweeting at Bubba saying that she would want to come to a race next year. Everybody was tweeting at Bubba. I yeah, because mean- Bubba is uh, a lightning rod right now for... Yeah, but they weren't tweeting support. at Bubba but last week yeah. before this was announced. Yeah. Yeah, LeBron tweeted at Bubba. All kinds of athletes have tweeted at Bubba since okay, this season started. Okay, athletes. Now look at Gabrielle Union. I mean, I would say she's a fairly recognizable and popular person. Yeah. And you know, I Shannon, just don't, Shannon I don't Sharp. Get the excitement. I mean, I like Michael Jordan. I like. We're from Charlotte. We're all in Charlotte. Great. Michael Jordan. He's a fan favorite here and around the world. But I don't understand how they're gonna. I don't know. I don't get it. What is that? That's going to be because you know, he's famous. I, I it's going to make people excited about NASCAR. I don't know why I haven't given you this nickname earlier, Daryl, but it just popped in my brain like a like a freaking lightning bolt to the top of my cranium. You are okay. Daryl Downer. You are a Daryl Downer. <laughs> I'm Daryl asking Downer. the question. You are a Daryl Downer. Forget Whoa. about the fact that it's going to bring more people to NASCAR. Don't even think about that aspect of it. But the probably one of the most recognizable people in the entire world is showing interest in owning a race team. Is that not Uh exciting? Yeah. Um, Yes, it's exciting. This is really great. I'm very excited about this. You guys, if I disagree with you, then I'm just a jerk. So I I agree. No, we're just trying to get where, what's your, what's your thought process here, Daryl? Okay. Let's say that I love Michael Jordan and I'm a, a, a peer of his and I yeah. also have money like okay. a Floyd Mayweather or whoever and I want to come into the sport yeah. so I, I'm like look at Michael Jordan maybe yeah. this is a good investment I'm going to start looking into it because he's looking into it let me go to a Bristol race everyone says that's the one to go to and then I take my 550 million dollars and sit in a suite and watch single file racing with no wrecks where I watch my prospective driver Corey run into everything except the finish line <laughs> Like, I'm not going to put my money into that. The product on the track needs to be good. Jimmy Johnson should be the reason that everybody in the world is watching. Oh, yeah. Kyle Busch should be the reason that everybody's watching. We have our own Michael Jordans. Mm-hmm. And then when everybody runs and gets so excited when we have a new athlete come in. Are Why are we excited unhealthy. about a basketball player? We should be excited about Kyle Busch, the greatest driver alive besides Jimmy Johnson on the track each week. Somehow he can't do anything this year. I don't know what's happening over there. Corey's going to have to tell us. But I just don't see how one famous athlete coming in to gamble on sports. He just needs something else to gamble on. That's what this is about. Jordan's <laughs> tired of taking people's money on the golf course. He's going to start betting on car racing. And that's fine. And I loved it. I watched The Last Dance. That was a great program. I'm, I hope you got to see it, Lauren. It was fantastic. But I did again, see it, Daryl. Denny Hamlin <laughs> coming Darryl over Downer there. With another ice like, cold Good take. Luck, Bubba. We're going to take that $20 million and... <laughs> You're going to finish 15th now for a year. Okay, cool. I don't see what that does to help the sport. But that's just me. Well, you might now, be right on that aspect. Maybe they'll sell some t-shirts. That's good for Michael Jordan. That's not good for me. That's not good for my friend Corey LaJoy. How great of an investment is an NASCAR? I can't Holy. imagine that Horrible. Michael Jordan is expecting to make a ton of money off this, right? I don't want to throw out facts and figures because I have no clue what the financial backing is behind that team i and, and also we we let's not discredit denny's take in this because from yeah. what i understand he is probably the one doing all the work or his team is doing all the work uh from what i understand denny spent all of his like not all of his money buying that charter from mm-hmm. Jermaine racing was denny hamlin it from what i understand it wasn't michael jordan involved in that aspect of it now yeah. There might be some partners that Michael Jordan has that they're going to be in the car that help, you know, the the budget throughout the course of the year. He's obviously the principal owner, uh, is what his title is. Uh, but from what I understand, you know, Denny is taking a risk uh, for the future, mm-hmm. uh, investing in the sport. Now, he's outright said that the business model t- for owning a race team is not good right now. I mean, there's really no bottom to the pit of what you want to spend, right? We saw some of the most, uh, some of the most. Profitable companies, Furniture Row, for example, right? Yep. They had a shop out in Colorado, ended up winning a championship with Colt Pern and Martin Truex Jr. And the Gibbs Alliance alone, uh, more or less run them out of business. Um, and that's a company that's making tens of millions of dollars a year. Right. Still can't afford to do it, right? So, but I think if you're Denny, 
you're looking at the business model of the next gen car. Right. It helps right now that Bubba has sponsorship to bring to the table to help subsidize the spend, right? Because if you know that you're not going to be left with your pants down more or less uh, after one or two years, at least you can gear up for the next gen car where the price of R and D isn't astronomical. You know, you can buy your mm-hmm. chassis and bodies and suspension pieces from a single manufacturer. You don't have to. Buy, you don't have to. You don't have to employ six, seven, eight engineers to work on a rear end housing, right? You just buy a rear end housing and you go racing. You spend your money on a good engineer, good crew chief, and a good driver, and you should, in all theory, is what NASCAR is trying to make. You can have a competitive team. Right now, you know, if you're not a, if you're not in the if you're not the ones that are R and D in your own equipment, Penske, Gibbs, Hendrick, uh, Stuart Haas, then you mm-hmm. are getting second hand, third hand equipment and you just you might be able to compete every now and then but you can't consistently compete with those guys um you know you know who makes money in nascar lauren drivers drivers make money owners don't make money in nascar uh owners I, lose I, money i, in NASCAR. I, I beg I, well some, i mean i think they've got to be making some money otherwise they wouldn't why do you be do doing it? it right i mean they're, no, they're, they're makes people. a lot of money on his 164 dealerships and paint stores like they they make money on their businesses and then they use all the write-offs from their race teams but they love racing. That's I mean, great. We want people that love racing to run teams. I don't know if Michael Jordan loves racing. If he comes but in Denny and loves racing, loves racing, I'm into it. And like think? I think Corey's, I don't, I don't, don't discredit. I think the involvement that Denny has in it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When, when you read the article on right TMZ or, or whatever it is, you see <laughs> Bub, Bubba Wallace drives for Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. right? Where it's Denny Hamlin pushing his chips onto the table and saying, "Hey, let's go with it." So, you know, so Corey. Hey, Floyd yeah. Mayweather, you know Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've heard one of the him. best boxers alive, right? Yep. He's also trying to start a race team. Uh, not exactly. Uh, it is. It is a. He wants a, to be in racing. It's a group. No, this was several years. He's been like, he, from right. what I understand, My has, question has, is, has, he given, just his... has, has given his name and likeness to a group to help put together a team. Right. He's not the one writing a check, Floyd Mayweather. Ten million dollars for a charter to go racing. He's not mm-hmm. doing that. He's and probably cashing a check. I'm sure he would want to draw a check from anything. I mean, the guy's Floyd the Money Mayweather. So I, th- that's not comparable. It's it. That's not a good. That's not a good okay. comparison. To Derek what got Jeter. Going on right Derek now. Jeter wanted to come in and start a race team. Would you be excited? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you be excited for for big name celebrities and athletes to? Jump That's into what a you sport. love about NASCAR, Daryl. You love when the cele- when the real world gets involved with the NASCAR world. So I don't understand how this isn't which which at one least intriguing which to one Daryl makes. And and I don't want to I don't want to. Uh, I, I was just wondering what you hang, thought. Hang on. I, well, I'm I'm about to to ask you a legitimate question here. Uh, Bob Germain, right, has yep. invested millions of dollars. Uh, dealership guy from Florida. Right, mm-hmm. won some truck series championships, has done a lot in the sport. He sells his charter to Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan. Nothing against Bob Germain, but who is bigger? Who's bringing a, bringing a bigger audience to the sport? Bob Germain or Michael Jordan? You know what I mean? And, Michael and, Jordan. Okay, so why are we not excited, over the moon excited, regardless of how what the you know what the intricate details of the deal are? He's still going to be the listed quote unquote principal owner, whether he has a bunch of equity stake in the team, who knows, but he's still listed as the owner, right? No difference than uh, you know, Jeff Gordon is listed as the principal owner for the forty eight car, right? Michael Jordan. So you guys are excited about this. You like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah. Hell Ron, yeah. Into it? Yes, I'm into it, Daryl. <laughs> I think that if all of everything that Bubba spoke out for and against earlier in the season, that drew a new audience, I think. So I don't understand how you don't think that Michael Jordan being involved with the sport. I don't give two shits about Michael Jordan, to be honest. I don't watch sports, so I really don't care. But You know he's a big deal. I, I know he's a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't see how that couldn't put some more eyeballs on the sport. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's going to be I good. don't know. Maybe, it, hopefully it will. And that, I guess, will be a good thing. And But I just am not as excited as everybody else is. But maybe that's just my negative nature. I'm excited for it until we get halfway <clears throat> through next season and <clears throat> nothing has happened. Well, everything is is exciting in in 
the drawing stages, right. right? Until it comes to fruition. Like once you can, like a new car, right? When you're looking at a new car, it's nice and shiny and smells nice, right? Yep. The leather's brand new. And then you buy it, mm-hmm. right? And it it doesn't have that lust illustrious feeling oh, here anymore, i'll right? use my own example you buy the car you love it then you start driving it and you realize that you can't turn off the auto stop start feature in your car and it's a pain in the ass when your car stops at every single stoplight and I turns would, off i would literally <laughs> i would literally drive it back to the dealership oh. and trade it in for a car that i hate that feature it's the worst so Anyways. you know the the new is going to wear off eventually right yep. and it's, it's just going to be another team but from now until whatever the date February something, Feb- the Daytona 500. It is going to be the talk of the town. When yeah. the when then the Michael... paint schemes released, when what sponsors are going to be on the car? Obviously, it's going right. to be DoorDash and Cash App and everybody that supports Bubba. Columbia, but also Columbia, right? I think that's more of a personal deal anymore than it is on the car. But um, I yeah, think but it's if cool. if people think that they might have the opportunity, if they live in the Daytona area and they otherwise wouldn't go to the Daytona 500, but they think that Michael Jordan might be there and they can get there. Shoe signed. Well, hell yeah, people are going to show up. Absolutely, and that's not going to happen. And and also that's 100% another hundred percent going to happen. Another thing <laughs> that goes forgotten in Daytona. Daytona's a big basketball town, right? Like Vince Carter went to Carolina, played twenty years in the NBA. Uh, he, his right down the street from Daytona International Speedway is Vince's high school, right? Mm-hmm. And it says Vince Carter's uh, basketball gym or basketball court. So like the surrounding community, if you're not a race fan. Uh, you're probably a basketball fan. And if you're in town for the 500 and Michael Jordan, so you hear, owns a team, why wouldn't you go check out how that team does? Yeah. It's going to probably end up having number 23 on it, right? The uh, Bubba Wallace is driving it. It's exciting. Um, and I, I'm this. excited. But I also don't want to, I don't want to. We're into this, Daryl. You guys it. are into this. Yeah, we're into I don't it. Wanna, I don't want to <laughs> um, lose sight, though, of, of Daryl leaving the 43. Right, mm-hmm. because I feel like um, Bubba had a great opportunity with the forty three. He had also had a great opportunity to stay with them to own some ownership and stuff like that. Those guys wanted to keep him, um, you know, and to to leave a pillar of the sport being Petty Enterprises morphed over three or four different times. Right, to be able to drive the forty three car is still an honor, regardless of where you feel like it is competitively. It's still he left one of the most recognizable teams of all time to drive for a new exciting right. team. You know what I mean? So, like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure Bubba is going to feel, be feeling some pressure uh, if he doesn't perform. And he's going to be in a position to perform. Gibbs is obviously going to have uh, – uh, he's going to have the same equipment as, as uh, you know, Denny Hamlin and Kyle Bush and Martin Truex Jr. and Chris Bell. But um, the pressure's on. I mean, he's making, a, he's making the jump to be more competitive. That's – well, you he know, kept saying that he's betting on himself. And, eh. I mean, in a way, he I mean, you are. You're leaving something that is probably pretty safe. And while you might not be, like, winning all the time, yeah. he's, you know you have he's a taking a risk yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, nothing, nothing Daryl? Nothing from I, you? I just feel like there's this push collectively to, to – make Bubba Wallace like the Lewis Hamilton of NASCAR, right? Like he could be our young superstar. That's like an outlier that everybody like, he stands up for himself and he stands up for everybody and he's exciting and he's young. The difference is Lewis Hamilton's one of the greatest drivers alive and wins races. So as popular as Bubba is getting right now, if he like to Lauren's point, if he can't crack a top 10 with Michael Jordan and well, golden child, Denny as the owner, it's all for nothing anyway. You yeah. have to win races. Well, yes and no. I mean, you, you can set realistic expectations, but I don't think that a comparison from, from Bubba to Lewis is fair to Bubba because, to your point, Lewis is probably the greatest race car driver of all time. I mean, arguably, right? There's probably only three or four in that conversation, right? Ayrton Senna, mm-hmm. in my opinion, Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson uh, and Michael Michael Schumacher, right? Like those those the, you you can you there's only four or five guys in that conversation for greatest Mario Andretti, sorry, uh, for greatest motor race car driver of all time. So, um, with that being said, don't draw the comparison just because 
because the similarities between Lewis and Bubba, right? They're they're the only African American drivers in or black drivers in their sport. Right? right. There's no black driver besides Lewis in F1. There's no black driver besides Bubba right, as of right now in NASCAR. So Lewis drives for head and shoulders the most dominant team in F1. Um and they just annihilate the field every week. So he's he is expected to win. Also, he puts the homework in, and there's no denying his on track talent. But he also has a humongous influence. And F1 as a whole has way more of a international audience than F than, than NASCAR does. So the comparisons between them two, like I don't like separate the two. Bubba's Bubba. He is. Yeah, but a, he's I don't a mean guy. race, Corey. I just mean this as no. far as how many Americans know Lewis Hamilton's name. I yeah. think. Our community, our NASCAR world, is expecting just as many people outside of NASCAR to know Bubba's name. And I'm saying without the wins, that's, you know, it's uh, well, tough. I mean, that's at the, at the end of the day, you're a race car driver. So, you know, your success level is measured by how many notches are in their win column at the end of the day. So, you right. know, I think that this is Daryl's best opportunity since he's been driving uh, in, the, in the Cup Series to contend for wins. I think he's going to actually do a good job. Uh, I think he makes the chase. Um, Based on what? What? On that car? Yeah. You think that car is going to be a contender for the playoffs, not the chase? <laughs> the playoffs. chase. I say the chase too, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Do, is he is he contending for wins every week? Probably not. But he is going to be, I mean, he every third week anymore in the, thir- in the 43, he runs, you know, 8th, uh, 14th. Like, that's a pretty good showing. So, um, I, I, I think Bubble will be around that 8th to 14th range each and every week. And if you run that well, that points you into the playoffs. And, you know, he's a decent speedway racer. We've seen him run, finish top five in the couple speedway races. So he'll have a shot to win the 500. He'll have a shot to win De- Talladega a couple of times. So it's uh, he's going to be sitting in a fast horse for sure. And I, I wish I wish him luck. I, and I wish Denny luck because he's bet on the sport than a lot of people. I do. I mean, I don't harbor any, like, ill will. Like, Dude, the guy, the guy's spending millions and millions and millions of dollars to invest in the sport. So, hey, I hope it works out for him. Look at this, how times have changed. That doesn't mean that he's I'm not going to go grab a beer person. with him. Yeah. I'm not going to grab a beer with him, but I hope that his investment works out because high tide raises all ships, right? I mean, that's the way it works. A new, mm-hmm. new team comes in, new partners come in, and, and then new partners that might not be in the sport are looking at the sport. Hey, look, DoorDash is in it. Maybe this is a decent platform. We can spend some marketing dollars. And it just, I get that. It, it trickles down, right? Or trickles up. I will say I got some text messages from people I didn't expect to hear from that were like, Michael Jordan's going to be in, in NASCAR. This is so like, people were excited about it. But again, they weren't saying anything about Bubba. They were just talking about Michael. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Michael is going to be popular always. I don't know if that's going to translate to our sport and Bubba being more popular. If it does, that's a win for everybody. I guess that would be a great thing. It's a win for everybody. We're happy. Yeah. Let's go to break. Let's there's go some, break there's some we'll, more silly season talk news. talk about Haley Deegan. Oh, God. What about her? her She's podcast. in the news. Okay. Let's talk about her. But we also got some uh, season stuff that uh, is rumbling around that some of it's announced, some of it's not. We can touch on a little bit after the break. Are you going to announce your new your new ride yet? I don't have a ride it's today. Yet. The day? No. Nope. Oh. All right, we'll be back after this. Clutch Coffee Bar in Mooresville, North Carolina, is redefining the drive-through coffee game in Race City, USA. The Clutch experience is fast, friendly, and delicious. Clutch Coffee Bar offers signature lattes and mochas, custom flavored infused energy drinks, smoothies, and more. You can also order our signature Clutch Coffee beans online and have them shipped directly to you. Go to clutchcoffeebar.com or visit our two locations in Mooresville, 356 Williamson Road and 154 West Plaza Drive. Power up today with Clutch Coffee Bar. And we're back. Um, We touched on it earlier in the show, joking a little bit, but not joking anymore. Uh, Another big... Big story out this week, which kind of got buried with obviously the same night uh, uh, Denny and MJ announced their deal with Bubba. Uh, Ross is going to the 42. Um, some some people expected it, some people not. Right? We we knew that uh, Chip Ganassi offered Bubba a contract, offered him actually two contracts, um, and Bubba obviously had the other thing working, so he took that. Uh, in which case, uh, Ross. Um, was still under contract with 
Ganassi from that uh, uh, 2018 deal with 2019, they were going to have the DC Solar deal and it ended up blowing up and all <laughs> that sort of stuff. But uh, he was still under contract getting paid by Chip Ganassi. So say, hey, well, Ross is fairly cheap. We could probably sell him. You know, he's got some B2B connections with, with farming. Why not? Let's just put him in the car and take a gamble. And, and also 2021 is now sort of a lame duck year anymore with um, – with the next gen car being pushed back a year due to COVID, um, now it seems like a lot of teams are just doing whatever they can to get by, just financially and just with what they have available to piece together to get to 22. Uh, seems to be what the conversations I've had. So it's kind of weird, the free agency this year because there's that element of you know some some teams not wanting to redo all their marketing material. Uh, just for one year, knowing they're going to have to redo it all again for 22 with the new car coming in. So congrats to Ross Chastain. He's a, a super good dude, obviously a really good race car driver. Um, you know, And, and Daryl texted in our chain. He said, what would you say, Daryl? I want to talk about this. About which part? About Ross. Uh, I don't remember. I like Ross. I don't know how much I'm supposed to say. Am I talking about what you asked me? Uh, no, I think we were talking about you're still your bone to pick with Kyle Larson. Oh, I said uh, we're finally going to find out how good of a cup driver Kyle Larson is. Because... And I wanted, to, I wanted you to elaborate on that because I, I still well, wanna, like, I love I talking about this. I think you're going to see Ross Chastain is going to show his stuff like we all know he has because he's done it over and over. He is This is his big shot, yeah, basically? Fair to say. This is his, his moment, his Kelly Clarkson wait a lifetime moment. <laughs> this is happening right now. And he is going to come out and he's going to be fantastic. And we're going to find out what Kyle Larson truly had to offer in that 42 car. And when Ross Chastain outperforms Kyle Larson, hopefully everybody will finally shut up about Kyle Larson. Because well, Kyle Larson will come back in some crummy equipment of whoever will have him. And we're going to find out that again... He's going to stay at the back of the pack like everybody else that has crummy equipment. And finally, Darryl, Darryl, Corey's Darryl. point is going to come to fruition. Darryl. Corey has been saying for years that it's the equipment. So when Kyle Larson, Darryl. NASCAR's dirt racing darling, comes Darryl. back in crummy equipment and runs 27th every week, Darryl, and Ross please Chastain stop. Please stop. goes from the – hold on, you asked me okay. – goes from the back to the 42 and starts contending for wins, I think the math is going to not add up, and we're going to finally see who's got the goods. All right, so that's your take. Frozen, in I want the an freezer, take. sitting on dry ice. We'll get Lauren's take after my take. So, did Kyle Larson outrun Kurt Busch, car for car, Iganassi? Doesn't I don't care about that. Yeah, that Kurt Busch is a champion. That's the bar you have to measure against, right? Right. If you Kurt look, Kurt Busch is a champion, and Kyle, Kyle Larson, Larson was outrunning him every week. Most but of no, 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 but nothing, but nothing, but nothing. You, you had your ramble. Now it's my ramble time. Okay, okay. Kyle Larson outran you think Kurt Busch. Kyle Bush Larson's first. a better driver than Kurt Busch. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Does his NASCAR stats prove that yet? No. But when he comes How, back, neither, neither does his trophy closet. How dare you, sir? What, what trophy closet? Have you uh, seen all the wins Kurt Busch has trophies? since he was two? I don't even want to get into the topic of <sighs> that. Uh, how about this? Lauren, how about, Lauren you're a little young. You might not know about this, but Kurt Busch Wait. is uh, an, he's a Hall of Fame caliber driver. Kurt Busch is incredible. Yeah, no Maybe question. Maybe not now, but he has an incredible no career. No question. And Kyle, Kyle Larson, Larson would have a lot of catching up to do to get the same accolades of Kurt Busch, plain and simple. And if you're going by numbers, Kyle Larson ain't got it even where close to Kurt Busch. I don't really know how you, how you assess what you believe talent is or not. Um, but Kurt I'm Bush, Kurt, you said this. I, I, I talk to, I talk to Kurt all the time and I think that he would probably be openly, uh, he would openly say that Kyle Larson is a badass race car driver because a lot of the times Kyle Larson would be setting the bar for Ganassi's performance. So when Kyle, so you said a couple of different things I want to touch on. You said, a Kyle Larson is going to come show. back. He's going to come back <laughs> in crummy equipment. Kyle Larson would rather continue to race dirt cars all next year before he comes back and races crummy equipment because he he knows you have to be 
I mean, I bet you he probably considered Ganassi crummy equipment because his back was sore from carrying that thing for the three years that he was there, and he still won six times. So if and when he comes back, which will be probably be at Hendrick, I've been saying mm-hmm. it for months now, he's going to be coming back, and Hendrick's not crummy equipment. He's going to elevate that whole team, and he's going to win races, and he's going to surpass Kurt, Kurt Busch. Um, now let's get back to Ross. Um, if, if Ross can run comparable to Kurt Busch, that would be the bar because, as you said, Kurt Busch is the champion. If Ross can learn from Kurt, look at his SMT data, and end up mirroring Kurt's uh, results, whether that be 10th or – Ganassi's not a race consistently race-winning team. It's, it's obvious. You look at the stats. So I think, Ross no. runs, I think Ross runs between 12th and 18th every week. He'll have some good runs at the speedways, have some good runs at the short tracks, maybe a mile and a half every now and then. I don't see him consistently beating Kurt Busch um, until he gets his kind of his feet wet in that sort of caliber equipment. Um, how about this for a, how about this for a question? Who finishes higher in points? Bubba Ross. Wallace. Bubba Ross Wallace is going to outrun. No, no, both Bub- of those no, guys. no. Bubba Wallace in the twenty-three, mm-hmm. or Ross Chastain in the forty-two. Hmm. Ross Chastain's a better driver. But I th- I believe this uh, that Denny Hamlin's team is going to have better cars, so it's going to offset itself for whatever difference you may believe that the talent level is. Hmm. L- Bubba's no slouch, man. Like, he he won a lot of truck races. He won, he ran damn good in, in Roush's Xfinity stuff. Like, he's going to get truck. in a good car and, and drive it to its capability. Truck racing's full of children, Corey. You're the one that tells us that all the time. It, it is. Well, uh, when Bubba Wallace was racing in trucks, there was still there was still grown some men. not children. Yeah, that's true. So, well, answer the question: Daryl Wallace or Ross Chastain? Who finishes higher? Who has a better season? R- Ross Chastain. Okay, I guess we'll write this down and we'll circle back twelve months from now and see where we add up. Corey, I ain't what are you talking think? to you eight podcasts from personally. Now, so I don't think that either of them back. are going to do anything. You, you think neither one of them are going to make the chase? I'm not saying they won't make the chase, but I think it will be like they're eliminated in the Early. first round just like some of those people that I feel like are comparable to them got eliminated last week. That's a hot take. I like that, Lauren. Yeah. I like your take. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not but, saying that Bubba couldn't finish well here and there, and I think Ross will finish well here and there, but I don't think they're going to come in and kick anybody's butts. Thank yeah, well, you. that remains to be seen. Yeah, I you know we'll see, but so you think he's, you, but the original argument is, do you think he'll outrun Kyle Larson at that team? And I think no. he will. And you don't? No. Okay. No, That's because cool. a, because a lot of their sponsorship left or is is obviously retracting some of their investment, so their budget's going to be lower. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of teams, back to my point about the lame duck year, are going to be on not necessarily coast and collect, but a lot of teams are going to be figuring out how to, you know, maybe not buy this new lower control arm or just magna flex it and make sure it doesn't have a crack versus, you know, maybe um, run an extra race on your engine to save, right, a couple a couple bucks. Like there's going to be a lot of those decisions made that were never made in the previous years just because they're, they're looking at a three to four and a half million dollar investment in the off season between 21 and 22 to, to transition to that next gen car, so a um, lot of lot of factors. I don't I don't see Bubba's going to outrun Ross, car for car. I, I believe so. Um, Larson's Larson's going to come back, boys. I'm telling you, mark it, mark it down, and it's not going to be crummy. It might not be the forty eight, okay. but it, it's going to be. It's going to be. I don't have I don't have like anybody saying yep yep he's coming back. I just. You can't keep that. You can't keep that guy out. He's it's not going to be the forty-eight, but is it going to be a Hendrick car? It'll probably be the eighty-eight, or maybe even renumber it to the five or something. Don't know. Ooh, the five. Let's bring the five the back. Five. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. Well, uh, look, you're very optimistic today. It's great. I'm glad you're rooting for all your pals. You're very pessimistic today, Daryl. Yeah, I'm not, Lauren. It's just you know. I don't know. He doesn't want to call Kurt Busch a champion. That doesn't make me he negative. Is a champ- uh, what? Ugh. I'm yeah. taking a break. I, You're Debbie Downer. I'm uh, Daryl Downer. I'm, uh, what am I? Complimentary Corey. 
complimentary girl. It's like saying if somebody's on a team with Matt Kenseth and they're outrunning them this year, like, oh, they're they're outrunning Matt Kenseth. Like, okay, but like Matt Kenseth is still the better driver no matter who you put on this team, don't you think? Uh, well, it's all situational, and I, you know, you gotta. I think I think Matt is probably a little bit checked out right now. He's he's uh you know not having a particularly good time. He's pretty evident on the radio that. He doesn't like driving these cars with, you know, the high downforce, low, low horsepower. And, you know, so, and there's probably not a whole lot of motivation, right? He's not racing for any points. He's not racing for probably a whole lot of money. Um, so it's kind of evident in the results, um, you know, yeah. and, and there's no taking away from Matt's talent, right? His talent hasn't diminished. His motivation probably isn't what it was four five, six years ago when he was at Gibbs and went at five or six races a year. So. Um, I want to hear about your Bristol experience, Corey. I watched from my couch. It did not look fun. Um, well, we were actually pretty good uh, at the beginning. We raced really hard with uh, Daniel Suarez for the Lucky Dog. I ended up getting him on the last corner, coming back to the stage. I held up Chase a little bit. He ended up winning that stage. I held him up long enough to where I can. He only passed one car, and I was able to pass Daniel coming to the coming to the uh, segment end. I was able to get that, and then sure enough, the next restart. Uh, Quinn Huff has been on the show. Something happened under the pit stop. He, I don't know, felt like he was going to hit the wall or something and jammed on the brakes, more or less stopped. Um, and then we got into the back of him, uh, ripped the right front fender off, which even at Bristol anymore, it's still an arrow disadvantage when you have any sort of uh, uh, damage, especially in the front end. So uh, we kind of limped around, and eventually uh, the seal fell out of the bottom of the steering box. So we oh, had no I hate when that happens. Um, so unfortunately that's another mechanical failure we've had. Not, not to say I'm counting, but there's been nine of them this year. So that's a little bit frustrating. Um, so it's, it's especially the timing of it really sucks because we've had multiple mechanical failures the last couple of weeks. And this is obviously a pretty crucial time to put some good runs up on the board. So, uh, you can have some leverage in the free agency market, but nonetheless, um, you know, the Bristol night rate's still awesome. We had fans there, which is another blessing. Um, I love having fans back at the racetrack. They just and they seem even more excited now that they haven't been able to go to the racetrack than they than they were beforehand. So uh, fans, we love to, and it actually makes me feel really good too when you come up to me at the racetrack and say you listen Sunday Monday and you love the show. So thank you for that. Thank you for listening. Um, but yeah, uh-huh. a, a little bit of a letdown for Bristol. Bristol night race is probably my favorite race of the year. And uh, regardless of damage, we had a steering box malfunction. We DNF. Um, so hopefully we can not have a mechanical failure. Did you watch the race, weeks. Lauren? Um, I think I did. did Kevin yeah, Harvick won. I watched some of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. Did you have a – were you cheering for Corey? Yeah. I was bummed Me whenever too. his – whatever he just said steering broke. box seal fell out. The, the arm, box leg, broke. face fell off. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Corey, what was with all the single file racing at a short track? Oh my gosh, it looked like a train. Um, well, I don't like I thought the racing was good. I mean, you had car I thought you had cars all over the track. Now Did you? Yeah. Besides I mean, you, who else was sliding all over the place cuz I saw a lot the upper half of the track was a big old train of single file racing. Well, you, you definitely had to navigate lap cars, which was a whole another topic that Kyle Busch brought up. Um, he was mad at Joey because he felt Joey. Uh, Joey was trying to stay on the lead lap. Um, so it was getting down to the end. I think there was 15, 20 to go, maybe a little bit less. Um, mm. Kyle Busch was leading the race, caught Joey Logano. Joey was probably running 11th or so, 12th. And Joey was running the top. And that was a preferred groove at that point of the race because the PJ1 traction adhesive had worn off. So. Oh the bottom, the beat, the the bottom lane wasn't the preferred groove; it was the top because the rubber started laying down. So um, Kyle caught him and rode behind him for probably two corners, and he just the one corner. Like there's always like the you know the, the you're playing chess, especially when you have Kyle uh, Kevin Harvick behind you. You know you it's a matter of trying to continue your momentum without letting a lap car impede your your lap time. Uh, so when he followed. Joey into turn one on the top side, Kevin plugged the bottom and was able to get to, to Kyle's left rear, which mm-hmm. made him 
obviously run behind Joey again to three and four, which Kevin ended up getting the lead, and that was ultimately what decided the race. So, um, you know, there was there was that incident, and then there was also the multiple cars who are completely in the way um, and don't and don't know how to get out of the way. Which, granted, Bristol's a tough place to get out of the way when you're a lap car and you're that far off the pace. Uh, Kyle again pointed out that. Uh, he specifically named names. That's how you know <laughs> he's he's fed up with it. He's had run-ins with Joey Gase, and he's had run-ins with Garrett Smithley, and he brought it up again, which obviously probably doesn't make those guys feel particularly good. <laughs> um, but if you are, if I mean, it's it's not a it's not a coincidence that the same guys are in the way every week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I've been there, but I uh, you got to figure out how to like not be in the way get out of the way just especially if this if you piss off the same guy multiple times like hey look in the mirror let's get out of that guy's way you know like get of him whatever he needs so you know I, I in in some in some regard i sympathize for for those guys because i know how far off the pace those cars are but at the end of the day too you are the one with the controls and you can figure out how to give way and give some room to the guys that are racing for wins so um Kyle Busch still has not won in 2020. He was very pessimistic with his playoff run. He says, we're going to be done after this round, which (laughs) in in all actuality, it is very probable, right? You go from Vegas. If he doesn't have a good run at Vegas, he has no playoff points in the bank um, to to speak of relative to the guys above him in the standings. You go to Vegas, you turn around and go to Talladega, which your probability reckon there is about 50-50, if not more. And then you go to the Roval, and if you look at his road course, <laughs> if you look at his road course day at Daytona, it was pretty horrendous. I mean, he was backwards more than he was forward. So, um, you, you if you're an 18 fan, you are not liking this round for for Kyle Busch if he can't get it done at Vegas. Um, and it's an interesting time when Kyle Busch is not won't make it to the round of eight, and and is realizing it. Yeah. I mean, he's super confident all the time, I feel like. So it was kind of interesting to hear him say that. Well, he was Can in. Can you he was imagine in his, he living was in, with Kyle Busch right now? Yeah. My goodness. I mean, he was in. The worst. He was in pristine, rowdy form on Saturday night after that race, right? Like, he'd come up short of winning at Bristol, which would have put some playoff points in the bank, would have obviously locked him in. He was already locked in, more or less. But, um, it would it would have been a confidence booster if anything going into the next round but run second again uh that was a heck of a duel between Kevin Harvick that was the two best going at it hitting their marks every lap sliding around which is pretty fun to watch so um if you're a Kyle Busch fan it's looking a little bleak but if you're a Kevin Harvick fan you are drinking some bush beer right now those guys are on it um what else? Oh, well said, Corey. A lot of uh, a lot beyond the silly season driver topics. There's a lot of silly season racetrack topics and schedule topics. Um, the schedule still hasn't been announced for next year. It's looking to be announced, I guess, in the next week or two. Um, it was, it was. I think they were wanting to announce it in April. April was half a year ago. So um, there's obviously a lot of. A lot of barriers are having to jump through. There's also a lot of new hoops we're jumping through. Uh, as we saw that was announced this past week, Texas Motor Speedway lost a points race uh, to Circuit of the Americas in mm-hmm. Houston, where the F1 cars go. Um, that is really cool. Coda is one of the, the, the pristine uh, just racetracks and, and entertainment centers in the country. So it'll be awesome for the Cup Series to go there. Uh, Texas gets in trade the all-star race Mm -hmm. um i don't think anybody's particularly excited about that after having a somewhat exciting bristol all-star race now we know what could be right and we are not making that happen um but i mean craziness on the nascar circuit i mean several weeks ago uh right california is reconfiguring to a short track Mm -hmm. coda's on the schedule another road course and it also seems like Bristol might have some dirt on top of it for the first for, race of the year. Was that for Cup? That's for Cup. Well, oh, you I can't. I mean, I you can't like race that. on. You can't race Saturday on Saturday on, oh, uh, I guess on concrete and then bring a bunch of dump trucks in on Sunday morning and get after it. Um, or vice versa, right? Race Xfinity on dirt and then come in and, and right. shovel it all out the next day. Okay. So 
it looks as if it may or may or may not be confirmed, but it is on the 98 yard line with a QB sneak ready to punch it in. I mean, that's that's where how close they are. Um, so, Lauren, you like the idea of dirt racing over there at Bristol? Yeah, I do. I enjoy that. Good. It, they Good. did it. They did it in 2000 and 2001. Uh, they raced late models as well as sprint cars at Bristol, and it was a heck of a show. Um, so it looks as if they are going to rekindle some of that magic for a dirt hmm. race uh, with the cup cars. I would assume Xfinity and trucks all together would go to Bristol on dirt. Um, that would be really neat. I, I I haven't driven on dirt since I was like eight years old, so like, watch out. <laughs> um, that would be... I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to expect. Obviously, the truck races at Eldora are a lot of fun uh, to watch as a spectator, so I don't see being any different for the Cup Series uh, when they go to Bristol with dirt on top of it. I mean, that's, that's going to be... That's the one Kyle Larson will win. If he races for Hendrick, he's going to win like four or five races next year, Daryl. I hate to tell you. No, he'll win the one at the dirt track. Well, yeah, but he's also going to win four or five other ones on top of that, too because that would be the best car he's ever driven in his career. But we've already moved on from that topic. Um, I'm not Daryl. I'm excited for some, dirt racing. Some of the other talks. Um, so we got Coda. Um, I, is that, that's already been announced, like confirmed, right? So there's that. There's Bristol on dirt, which the hasn't been like announced yet, but the talk of it enough is like it's happening. Um, I keep hearing Road America. Uh, which is another road course in Wisconsin. Uh, Xfinity cars go there already. It would be cool. I don't know uh, who gives up a date or gives up a weekend for Road America, but that would obviously be something that would be announced here shortly. Um, I need to go to Slinger. Nashville. Well, S- Slinger's facilities couldn't, couldn't you know, take. Slinger is a badass short track up in Wisconsin. Banked. It's like half the size of Bristol with more banking. Uh, they just don't have sta- – they don't have pit road. They don't have stands to accommodate a cup, cup race or safer bears. Um, I like the idea of the, and, the moving around, though. This is nice that we're kind of trying yeah. some new stuff. Agreed. Yeah, like like freshen, freshen it up a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Like freshen it up. That's what the people want to see. Regardless if you like a road course, you're going to tune in to watch a a track that the NASCARs have never been to before. The, the NASCARs. The NASCARs. Yep. The NASCAR. The NASCAR, huh? Yeah, real nice. Um <laughs> There's oh, Nashville, another one added to the schedule. Um, and I hear there's one more. Um, whether that's a street course, don't know. Mm-hmm. Don't know. I, don't um, know. I, think Stay tuned. The, I think that the next-gen cars will probably be a little bit more, um, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, able to race. They, have, they will have better brakes. They'll have better components to race on a street course because right now the, our brakes are, and our cars are super heavy uh, it wouldn't probably promote good street course racing but the next gen stuff i know they're working towards a street course um hold another topic um they announced the street course in nashville for the indy cars so it'd be almost how cool would it be to see a double header uh with indy cars and nascar um it, in nashville that would be badass would be interesting could be interesting which I haven't even thought about it until I just said it right now. Could be on the table right now. Who knows? Maybe. Well, a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Um, s- some stuff trickling out slowly but surely. Exciting time in NASCAR. I'm glad to be a part of it a little bit. Hopefully I can stay in some, keep it in some form or fashion. Hey, and, How's and your the, stress level, Corey? Are you, is this like the most stressful time of year? Um, I mean, I'm in the same position this time of the year every year so like it's I nothing know, new but i'm thinking you know it, this is a lot of uh, there's a lot up for grabs right now are you feeling optimistic i'm feeling op- very optimistic i mean even my worst possible scenario will be good and i'll i mean i will make at least the same amount of money i'm making now and have the possibility to run way better um so that's where that's i'm having some meetings this week and next week hopefully something can get put together before the end of the show, and maybe I'll just save it until the last episode of the year and announce it, and then just pull the plug. Lauren or, and I should come to your meetings. We could we could represent you. Uh, that that's not going to happen. Um, or if I let's Lauren's the, a good negotiator. I mean, the, she the negotiates best, every week I'll, for those oh, pallets. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you. I'll tell you what, Daryl. The best thing that could happen for our listeners would be I don't have a ride, and I can just actually 
say what I'm <laughs> thinking about everything instead of like keeping my mouth shut on a lot of things if so I don't true. have partners and, and things to worry about. Yeah, if Corey doesn't have yeah, a ride next year, he'll want to have nothing to do. So we might as well oh keep this show gosh, going. Oh my gosh, imagine imagine the show where I didn't care about people's opinion of me. You that know, that, be, that would be a lot like this summer before you, you know, buttoned it up. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm, st- I'm trying to find a job right now. So that would be, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. We should probably take a break and then we have to do our clutch performer and the O'Reilly Auto Parts reward or Re- review section. Review section. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's I, do I, it. I, I okay. think we have some good reviews because you guys are so kind of your adoring love for the yeah. show. Yep. Right back. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTire.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. And we're back. Um, we got two, I mean, the most important part of the show, and you guys, I know, we're just waiting on it. It's time to announce our Clutch Performer of the Week. And we haven't talked about this. Nope. As we don't do anything else. Like, we literally just talk about our topics five minutes before the show every week. Yep. Um, so, Lauren, you kind of mumbled under your breath who you think your Clutch Performer of the Week. Who would that be? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I got to give it to Michael Jordan just for the fact that Daryl is not excited about it. No, I think I am now. I think I'm with you, Lauren. Michael Jordan <laughs> for the win. Okay. You cool. guys convinced me. Okay, uh, that's my pick. Corey? Uh, I mean, I I guess. I guess. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how much performing he did. I think he was just kind of like along for the ride in this deal. But, hey, we'll give it to him. Because anytime we get the chance to give the GOAT a clutch performer of the week, that might be his biggest accolade and the biggest reward in his life. Yeah, so that far. That clutch performer of the week on a Sunday money. What it's, about you, Daryl? Who do you think? Yeah, Michael Jordan. Michael yeah. Jordan's going to fix NASCAR. I'm excited about that. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I think Weaver listened, Matt Weaver listens to the show. He had a headline, wrote a story about it last night I was reading. And he says how, how Michael Jordan's going to change NASCAR and change the world. And I was like, whoa, there to <laughs> Weaver. Back her down. <laughs> He's going to make an impact. He's going to make a splash. He's going to probably utilize NASCAR in a lot of ways that have never been utilized before. But... I mean, we're not solving world hunger here. Uh, I mean, like, we might we might make some positivity around, but let's 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 call it what it is here, because after yeah. after three weeks after the West Coast swing, they're just another race team trying to fight for every spot on the racetrack. Um, but we'll give the clutch performer of the week to none other than Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, you can go to Clutch Coffee and get a clutch coffee. I, I mean, he, he might be in town a little bit more. You know, he might be in town if, if that shop is in Mooresville. He's going to be in there. He's a principal owner. He's probably going to be spending a lot of time there making probably. sure those mechanics what else are getting do? those cars built as they should be. Yep. Hey, did you know you can go have clutch coffee beans delivered to you? What? That's crazy. Yeah. I've all never you ha- heard that. Go to clutchcoffeebar.com. Yeah. That's all you have to do. They can actually send the beans right to you. Right. I'm drinking my clutch coffee right now. I'm like, my, their beans are so strong. I can feel my beard growing as I drink it. <laughs> wow, that was what fun. What is my girlfriend looking for? What are you looking for, Kayla? I know. She's looking for some LaCroix, she said. Oh, God. Oh, no. You I drank it all. find some. You drank it all. Oh, um, it's up there. Has anybody written a nice reviews? Yeah, Daryl, this is your favorite part this of is, the show. This is the O'Reilly review section. Tell us okay, about how great see. you are. And and just don't read the ones that they say anything <laughs> negative about you. Lauren, you're not going to read any. Um, I yeah, here I'll I had it pulled up. Do you want me to read one? I like, sure. Well, I want you to be able to read your favorite one. I think there's only two this week, but yeah, I um, think you're right. I'll go with Sunday De Niro by Backstreet Bob. That is a great name. This is a great podcast, and I keep coming back for more. I love Corey's firsthand experience when it comes to talking about racing, and I love it when he puts Daryl in his place. 
This mm. podcast is a great listen at work, the car, or just killing time. Corey LaJoy is an absolute beast. Mm. Well, okay. I don't want to go that Thanks far. Nice. Well, that's a little bit of a reach, but, you know, thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, Levi Cox, I think, and I don't know if we read this one, but I don't, maybe not. Great podcast. Hated when Daryl would interrupt when I first started listening, but I've grown to enjoy the antics, and it's probably my favorite part of the show now. Oh, thanks, Levi. Lauren just doesn't care so much that I find that hilarious. And then Corey <laughs> with the CUDA. What are your plans with this CUDA? Also, would you be interested in the 43 ride if y'all didn't already talk about it on the show? <laughs> Peace, guys. Thanks for all the laughs. Five stars. Oh, thanks. That's great. Seems like yeah. the king needs a new driver. That was the name of his. So, Well, we appreciate you guys. Is anybody else getting all these text messages about voting? Are you getting tons yeah. of text messages about voting? Donald yeah. Trump actually texted me the other day. I figured he was, I mean, I expected it coming being that I was driving his car around. It right. was only a matter of time until Donald texted me himself. That was pretty cool. Are you finishing the season in the Trump car, or what's going on? I think we have it maybe once or one more time. Okay. Um, All right. Fun stuff. Well, we've learned a lot today, Lauren. Mm-hmm. We have to read our, we have to close out our O'Reilly yeah, session. Yeah, but well, I wanted to answer Levi Cox's question. Uh, of course, if Richard Petty calls me, why would you not want to drive that car? That's obviously a uh, pretty badass car to drive. I mean, there's only been a certain amount of people that uh, have been uh knighted by the king if you will um yeah like brian scott you know like brian scott well he drove the 44 he didn't quite get the nod for the 43 and you know okay. there I, I was a development driver there for about seven years ago so they wouldn't even have to get me new polos i can really just dig into my closet attic and just rip open that bag it might have some mothball holes in it but like yeah. you know they want, that sounds uh, we, like a good enough reason to me. We can save some money on polos and the whole bit. We got a backpack still, so, you know, hey, it's RP, great. I told you, if you need a guy, you know where I'm at. So, the O'Reilly Review section is brought to you by none other than O'Reilly Auto Parts. Go to there for all your car care needs. They're close, convenient, and known for their guaranteed everyday low prices and excellent customer service from professional parts, people you can trust. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today. Better all, yeah. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices, better reviews every day. That was great. Yeah. Thanks so Ooh. much to O'Reilly Auto Parts. Breaking news. Clutch Lauren. Coffee, Hercules Tires. Yes, Daryl. Uh, NASCAR has struck a new deal with Levy Restaurants to transition its food and beverage operations from AmeriCrown to Levy, which okay. run concessions at all NASCAR venues starting in 2021. I saw that. I mean, people are going to be fired I- up. They can't wait. They're the huge change. <laughs> That Adam Stern, man, he is on it, huh? He freaking breaks everything. He does break everything. That, I mean, that guy is on it. Got us Wonderful. all bugged. Well, we'll see how oh, we do, I mean, guys. I think it something that's exciting. pretty... We'll um, be back and try it again next week, right, Corey? Uh, something, a reason to tune into the truck race this weekend. Travis Travis Pastrana's back, as well as his uh, iRacing Conrad, Connor Daly. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Connor Daly's a regular in the IndyCar series, uh, so it'll be cool to... Make see his make make him uh, his make his excuse me his uh, truck series debut as well as Travis bring a little bit of excitement another storyline to the show on I guess it's uh, third Thursday night no Friday night I should know that but Friday night watch the truck race Travis always is a pretty cool dude um, and and Connor's a friend of mine as well so give him a shout out wish those guys luck on uh, in truck race um, that's about it. Daryl's head's about to explode because there's been way too much racing talk for one podcast. Seven to go, Lauren. Oh, Seven to go. God. I hope I make it. We got this. Yep, we got it. And, and to the person that said Lauren doesn't care at all, that's not true. She yeah. cares. I care. Yeah. It's just not about what, you know. It's not about what Corey cares about. Right. We just don't care as much as Corey. Right. That's right. Yeah. Next right. week. Just like the last. I'm hungry. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, Corey. Bye, Daryl. Bye, Lauren.